Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a track day footage with telemetry data overlay using Harris Lab Timer, like the video you're seeing right now. Alright, let's start with what you need to do while at the track. First of all, you need a Grand Prix edition of Harris Lab Timer, and you need one of these OBD dongles to pull data from the car. To verify that your OBD dongle has been properly connected, you can go to Administration, Sensor List, and you should be able to see your OBD sensor here. Another way to verify this is by going to Race, click on the Status, and you should be able to see that OBD Update Rate and OBD dongle are both shown as green here. In your video setting, if you only want to use the video from your external cam, like a GoPro, you can simply select the No Cam option from here. If you want to use your iPhone as a second camera, then you can select the Internal Camera Mode. For me, I like to use the front-facing camera on the iPhone to capture a cockpit view. You can preview it by hitting the Preview button. If your main view is coming from an external camera, like a GoPro, you actually don't need to connect it to the app. You can simply set up the camera and just hit record. We will import the video clip back into Harris Lab Timer and do the overlay later on. All right, we're now back from the track. Assuming you've had multiple sessions during the day, you can start by downloading the video clip of the session that you're mostly interested in onto your phone. If you're using GoPro, you need to take an extra step by downloading the video clips from your GoPro app to your photos library. For a long video, GoPro will save it in several small segments by default. Before we input the video clip into Harris Lab Timer, it's a good idea to combine the video clips into a single long one. To do this, you can use one of the video editing apps like iMovie. In iMovie, click on Create Project and then Movie and then select the video segments that you want to combine into a single clip, and then hit Create Movie. iMovie automatically applies a dissolve transition between each video clip. Before exporting the video, you need to find the transition between each video clip. To remove it, simply click on the transition and select None. Now we're ready to export this video. To export, hit Done, Assign name if you wish to, and then select Save Video. We are now ready to import this video into Harris Lab Timer and align the timestamp. To start, select the session that the video clip is associated with, and then select the first full lap that you finished by passing the finish line. Normally, this will be the first lap of the session. But for my session, since my GoPro was not recording in the first two laps, my third lap would be the actual first lap. Now select the first lap, or in my case, the third lap. Hit Edit, then Add Video, and select Video we just exported. Since we are doing a rough alignment right now, you just need to score to the end of your first lap. Then select the frame where you're just about to pass the finish line. For most tracks, the finish line is actually not the bridge. For instance, for Laguna Seca, the finish line is actually a little bit before the bridge. You can see it vaguely in this video. Either way, when you're selecting the finish line, make sure you align to the right object. You can also fine-tune the alignment by clicking on the arrows on top. When you're done, click Set and apply to the full session. We can now proceed to doing the fine-tuning. To do that, first select a lap that's not the first lap, because we need the lap to both start and finish from the finish line. Scroll down to the video section. Since I'm also using the front-facing camera on my iPhone to capture a cockpit view, it is right now being used as the master cam. To rearrange, click Edit, and simply swap the sequence of the two cams. We now need to export the video 
to see how far off we are with the rough alignment. Select export. You can do an optional intro and extra for the video. And then turn off reference video option. And hit overlay. Go to the photos library to review this video. Go to the start of this lap. Chances are, the stopwatch at the lower left corner is not reading 00, zero right now. Line up your car with the start and finish line and note down the number shown on the stopwatch. On my video, it says 1.05 seconds. What it means is that the stopwatch started 1.05 seconds before the start of the lap. So we need to delay it by 1.05 seconds to line up with the lap. Let's go back to Harry's lap timer. Select revert. Click on the video and go to the lap that we were working on. Remember, we want to delay the start of this lap by 1.05 seconds. You can do this by clicking on the fine-tune arrows on the top. Each click on the single arrow is going to move the mark by a hundredth of a second. Each click on the double arrow will move the mark by tenths of a second. To move it by 1.05 seconds, we need to click on the double arrow by 10 times, and then the single arrow by 5 times. Click Set, apply to the full session, and then hit Done. We can now do another export to verify the alignment. Let's take a look at the video we just exported. When the countdown timer hits 0, we are right at the finish line. So the alignment work is done. Good job there. Now, if all you want is the video from the GoPro, you can simply go back to Harry's lap timer, delete the picture in picture, and re-export this video. However, if you do want the picture in picture cam in this video, we will have to go back to Harry's lap timer and align it to the GoPro footage, since they are out of sync right now. In order to do this, we need to identify an event that's happening in both cams and use that to align the two cams. Here you can see I did a quick counter steer and it's happening first in my picture in picture video and then the main video. In case you missed it, here's a quick replay. I'm going to use the end of the counter steer as the frame for alignment. In the cockpit view, the stopwatch reads 12.66 when that frame happens. And in my main cam, the same frame took place at 13.46. The difference is 0.8 seconds. What it means is that the same frame would take place in my cockpit view 0.8 seconds before it happens in my main view. To compensate for this, we need to delay the frame in the cockpit view by 0.8 seconds. In other words, we need to move the start of the cockpit view earlier by 0.8 seconds. Let's go back to Harry's lap timer, and this time we're going to click on the picture-in-picture -picture view. Score down to the lap that we're working on. And we're going to click on the double arrow 8 times to move the mark earlier by 0.8 seconds. Hit set, apply to the full session, and done. We can now do another export to verify the result. Coming back to the same turn, you can now see that my motion in both the main view and the cockpit view are perfectly aligned. Here's a replay of the same counter steer. This alignment would also apply to the other laps of the same session. You can now export any other lap of the session and the videos will be aligned. Alright, so that's how you create a track day footage with telemetry data overlay using Harry's lap timer. It took me a good while to figure everything out and put together this video, so I definitely hope that you find it informative and helpful. Please give me a thumb up if you like the content I put together. If you have any questions regarding the process, please don't hesitate to leave your question below in the comment section. I will definitely reply to you. Alright, 
Thanks for watching and have fun on the track.